Commanders in Cleveland for their first preseason game, exhibition game. How did we look out there? How was Sam Howe? How did he look in the offense? Was he comfortable? Is the offense still stagnant? We're going to get into all that. If you're here, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And definitely, if you subscribe, please hit that notification bell. It's important that you like so I can get into the YouTube algorithm and you hit that bell for notifications to any of my new content or videos that I may upload. With that all being said, let's get right into it. Welcome back to Burgundy Drip Gold Trim. If you're here for the first time, you're more than welcome to stay. Today, again, we're here to talk about the first preseason, you know, exhibition game that we had up in Cleveland. It started off delayed um, at an 8.46 kickoff time. That is very abnormal. But nonetheless, I was just happy to see a football game and happy to see my Burgundy and Gold, my commanders, play. First and foremost... We all know who was the emphasis and who the focal point of this offense moving forward was and will be. We already know, obviously, you know, the guy from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Samuel Howe. Now we're going to get into that. First, Sam looked good out there. Besides, like, the, especially for a young quarterback who essentially – in many minds is a rookie because he only has one start under his belt prior to this but he went nine for 12 and like he really started off to drive the ball was moving the ball was moving well like this line has to get it together like i know like we're still in the, the phase of evaluation and processing and progressing through you know um preseason so we're going to figure out what's the best lineup and what fits around sam you know, Sam could work on some things, but other than that, he looked good. Like, one thing I would li love to see him work on is definitely his pre-snap. You know, calling out protections, looking for blitzes, calling hot routes. This will help him moving forward. And again, as I stated in previous videos, um, having like a running back who could be extra eyes, if he sees something, he could pick up a blitz and a, a tight end, he can block or potentially a hot route. Other than that, I, I see us going way more than we did last year. I can see we went, we scored around 19 points last year on average. I can see us scoring 26 points, probably extra, you know, plus an extra point this year, you know what I'm saying, around 26, 27 points. I can see that. And I, and I see how this offense is going to be. It's going to be much more fluid. It's going to be much more motion. And it's going to be much more utilization of everything around us. We, Sam is going to essentially spread the ball. He's going to spread the love. Um, there was a play um, in the game that was called back due to Andrew Wiley. He, he constantly kept holding. That's one of the points was awarded thanks to his holding. And he, you you really have to, you, you really can't do the things like this, Andrew Wiley. I know, I like, move for we had issues with communications with the line. You know, always jumping, especially on the right, you know, the right tackle position. It's bringing back memories of Morgan Moses, man. Morgan Moses used to always jump, jump, man. Oh, my God. He's in Baltimore right now. We're going to see them in our next preseason game. We're supposed to have a practice with them as well prior to the game. But but Sam, but Sam showed. He showed poise. He showed that he can extend plays. And the trust and the confidence is going to build in him. Right now, everybody is against us. Like, oh, everybody's just waiting for us to mess up, pretty much. Like, I've seen it on social media. Everybody, like, he's going to come out there. He's going to fall flat on his face and do this and that. Again, I got to see Sam in person at that Cowboys game. Like, it was, it was like Sam should have finished that game throwing around, like, 73%. Like, 14 out of 19, 15, because... Terry had a couple of drops in that game. Jahan did, too. And they were right on the money. They were right to him. Sam throws to his receiver. And he throws to where only the receiver can catch it and make a play. We have not seen that here in a long time. Now, it's some things that you know he was a young rookie quarterback. And you, you kind of see why he fell in that draft. But let's be real. Any other draft, Sam Howe would have been a second or third round pick. And I'll explain why. The draft are... this. Last year's draft, the quarterback class, 
it already had a stigma against it that there was no quality or no franchise, you know, quarterbacks coming out. So that hurt a lot of people's stock, not just Sam's. Like, a lot of people, they would they would draft it in places they wouldn't be in any other draft. Like, yeah. you can I – can't, I can't really think at the moment of a, 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 a draft class. But any other draft class, a lot of these guys would have been drafted a little bit higher and depending on who else was in that, probably – a little bit lower than what they was, but any other draft class, Sam wouldn't have, wouldn't have dropped that low. But you you see like some of his foot mechanics, you see like it, it was kind of off and like the way he kind of like delivered the ball or um the high point of the ball. I, I can kind of see that. But a lot of these college players coming out, that's what you have coaching for. That's what you have staff for. You get staff to work with them. I've seen they said the same things. A lot of things they said about Anthony Richardson is that he has to work on some of his mechanics. But they took him based upon his um his physical gifts. He's a 6'5 quarterback. He can run. He can extend plays. We know how it's a quarterback-driven league, and we know like how you can just take a player based on potential and you can groom him to be better. And if pieces are put in place, just like how there is, for example, with Anthony Richardson, he already going to a situation where they run heavy. He going to a situation where he has two big targets. So that's a good situation for him. Sam, how I'm not comparing the two, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just giving context. How is a, a six foot, six foot one quarterback? And that a lot of people are gonna discount things like, oh, can he see over the line? Um, his decision making. Last night, Sam made some good decisions. When it wasn't there, he threw the ball out of bounds. He did it twice. And that was because of the offensive line to give him time to throw. Imagine if he's got time to throw and, like, really, you know, see the patterns, see the defense. You know what I'm saying? It can, it can open up more of an opportunity, a window of opportunity, if this line can create a window for him and a good pocket for him to throw, like a clean pocket. Because I don't, you know, you don't want no young quarterback just running for his life every play. But the line picked it up in some aspect, but he still showed confidence and poise. So you can already see that moving forward. And on one of the plays that Wiley, Andrew Wiley held on, um, it was a like, who was that? John Bates was wide open. He drops the pass. He dropped, and I know the coach has got to get on him. So you can already see, like, just a preview of what is to come. We need the offense to match the energy of the defense. Speaking of the defense, it, it was some things early on. You know, Was Deshaun Watson is a good quarterback. Re regardless of him sitting out a year, you know, he, he had to really, you know, get back on his feet, understand the feel of the game and all that again. It was a lot of, like, missed tackles and stuff and a lot of plays that he extended. And we really going to need <laughs> – we really going to need um, Chase Young and Montez Sweat to wrap these quarterbacks up. Montez Sweat always gets to the quarterback. He always rushes, but he doesn't always wrap them up. Montez Sweat could have had, like, possibly 18 sacks last year. The year before that, possibly 15. He gets to the quarterback. He gets the rushes, but he can't never wrap them up. And, and Chase Young, like, even though it wasn't a situation where it was a um, – a situation where he was rushing. It was just like a situation where Watson's about to take off. He could have wrapped them up. He could have corralled them, wrapped them up, and took them down. I know the rules are, are different, and a lot of people have to adjust to like NFL rules because you don't want to blast the quarterback and get a 15-yard penalty. So maybe that could be a mental lapse and a mental issue there. But Emmanuel Forbes, I don't believe he was targeted the whole game. I know people, you know, had, was looking for something negative to say about him, but he made a play as well when he stopped the run. And Percy Butler got an interception as well. But this is only just one game. I don't want to dwell on too much, but Jacoby Brissett looked it real sharp in that first drive. He looked it real sharp. So that's another plus because a lot of people are like, oh, if Sam doesn't work, they have Brissett, this, Brissett, that. I already knew what – understood what they were doing with that you want a veteran quarterback you know who doesn't even mind you know that position to give the young brother some knowledge and some tutelage and it's also a safety blanket on Ron's and if, if Sam don't become who he is but I can already tell like they were all, they were sold on Sam like these players are sold on Sam this staff is sold on them 
this fan base is. And again, in the other draft, Sam is not a fifth round pick. All the media keeps focusing. He's a fifth round pick. He's a fifth round pick. The same media who all of a sudden, you know, put Brock Purdy on the pedestal. You know, they tried to create him, make him seem like he could possibly be the next Tom Brady. Now you look at um, in a um, joint practice, the 49ers go against the Raiders. He throws three interceptions. Now they got headlines on that. I mean, it's a joint practice. You don't want to – it doesn't count in the game, but, you know, the coaching is going to get on them about that, I'm sure. You don't want to blow things out of proportion. You don't want to overlook everything in the situation. But a lot of people believe in Sam. And about this report about the commanders' players complaining, it looked like that intense coaching really paid off. And it looks like EB, you know what I'm saying? He got some flavor. He got some flavor in his offense. Scott Turner, oh, my God, I hate going back to talking about him. Y'all know how I feel about that. It was just so dry. It was no creativity. It was no, just just look at the sample size of what you've seen with Sam and Jacoby. But let's just focus on Sam in this situation because we already know he's QB1. For all you fans out there who want to go on and, and nitpick and go on Twitter or the Malcolm X edition of Twitter X now and go on all on every other social media platform, it's not a QB battle. It never was going to be. We already knew that. We already knew about how this coaching staff felt about Sam Howe. If you actually follow reports, Ron Rivera showed interest in Sam Howe t- towards um, going into the the combine last year it was articles you can look it up and i started to look more into sam like i was looking looking at all the the prospects coming out i'm like yeah you know out of all these guys probably between kenny pickett and sam howell though probably ritter too that's what i was thinking but i was starting to lean towards more of sam howell because i was like we're not gonna get kenny pickett because his stock is going up i knew we wasn't gonna get him I knew he needed a receiver. So I was like, Sam Howe going to be available in the second or third round. But, you know, then I was like, ah, Carson Wentz is probably going to get shook and rattle and, and, and think like Sam is coming in to take his job. I didn't even think we had a chance to get him. So when he when he fell to the to the fifth, I was like, wow, like Bailey Zappi got drafted before Sam Howe. That is crazy and it's insane. It could just be the football guys is blessing us. They're awarding us with this. Who knows at this point? Because a lot of things are starting to fall into place in favoritism towards this team that I have not seen and felt probably in a very long time. And the last time a number 14 opened up the regular season versus the Arizona Cardinals, man, we had a pretty good season that year. And it was games even in that 99 season. Yes, I remember it. I was young. But yes, I remember that season. I remember that feeling. Like, I remember us a play away, being like a play away, just a stop. And if we could have avoided just some brain farts, we could have been on our way to an NFC championship versus the the greatest show on turf that year. Yes, I remember all of that. The greatest show on turf in 99, for those who don't know, it's the St. Louis Rams. That was a hell of an offense. And imagine if we had that type of offense, more of a modern offense, though, with more RPOs, that type of offense to match like a defense of like the O2 Buccaneers. Come on, just just really think about that. Sky's the limit. I ain't gonna wrap y'all up too much longer. I make a lot of these videos on the fly. You know, um, I have to do this right now based upon certain things in my life I don't wanna get into, but I'm really building this platform up and I appreciate anybody who's tuned in um who's passing through just make sure you give this a like comment share and subscribe make sure that notification bell is on and if you agree you cool with me and if you don't please do so respectfully till next time burgundy drip gold trim